Uh, Craig McKinley is a Conservative MP and is joining me this morning uh, to talk about the issues with uh, migrants and being housed. But Craig, thank you so much for joining us. I'd love to ask you your thoughts on these anti-protest powers being uh, brought in ahead of uh, the coronation. Obviously, we want to make sure that the major event being you know, shown to the world goes off without a hint. Uh, people want to be able to enjoy and pay their respects. Uh, but also, we do have a democratic right to protest. Where do you draw the line? Well, I think these powers are right. They're, they're, they're put together for a reason because it was deemed that the powers that were existing weren't working. I mean, I, I, I would uh, tend to agree with one of your uh, one of the commentators you you, you read out there that the Highways Act, uh, Public Order Acts, there, there were I, I felt sufficient powers to actually stop some of this activity. Uh, but we saw just a couple of weeks ago uh, a few million people watching the snooker was enough for one of the uh, protesters to go uh, throwing uh, orange powder about uh, the lure of uh, doing something similar for a procession that's going to be watched by a billion or more people around the world uh, as you say could be too much of a an attraction of the of the moth to the flame on the light uh, to keep uh, well, to yeah. encourage people to do the but, same but so, the, the fear yeah, so, I mean, is though these, that, were, these were rushed through a little yesterday yeah. but that's, fine. But that's, that's always fine. a way we we'll also rush through of course you know there's lots of discussion about this but there is a balance to be had isn't there and a lot of people do feel actually it's, you know the existing laws simply aren't being used by the police not being used or enforced by the courts and if we just you know we, we could just actually enforce the laws we've already got that would be a good start well absolutely and I, and I'm a, I was really sorry to see uh, one of the statements by uh, one of the sentencing judges on, on on a similar activity a few months ago uh, sort of saying oh well, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of jailing you with great reluctance well that's that's not really for a, a judge to say it's the law of the land but I've been on protest before you know I'm a bit of a protester uh, I know in the early 90s right through the 90s I was regularly on marches for Brexit uh, through London they were very civil. Long before it was fashionable, by the way. Way before it was fashionable. <laughs> but there was still quite a number of tens of thousands of people there. Yeah. So, you know, the, the fashion was changing. And, you know, we, we gathered at uh, Trafalgar Square and walked through the streets very calmly and, and nicely and organised with the police. And yeah. that is, to me, what protests are all about. When you look at the big countryside alliance marches of, of old, you know, these weren't chaotic, uh, designed to actually interfere with people's lives. But it seems now that uh, the, the, the That's the point of them. And again, you... You're part of the net, net zero scrutiny group uh, in the Commons, and and this is the thing: people they're, they're trying to sort of bully the government, making demands of the government, extinction rebellion, that that deadline that fell last week. But it's extraordinary, as opposed to trying to change hearts and minds, persuade people of their argument, and use the democratic process, which is what how people should do this. Um, we, democratic process certainly seems to be working when it comes to the British public having their say on issues like migration. I want to talk to you about legal migration as well but in terms of illegal migration which most people would regard someone getting on a dinghy in calais paying a people smuggler four grand and to arrive in this country is illegal migration that's certainly what the new law is going to show but we've seen revealed this week that the home office is planning to use not just that one barge that could house 500 uh, channel migrants but also another 10 disused cruise liners ferries and barges to help tackle processing delays basically instead of putting them in expensive three and five three and four star yeah. hotels uh, basically putting these people in ports around the country merseyside first in line. Um, do you support this policy? Well, I support it to the extent that I don't want migrants being put up in, in hotels that uh, uh, you and I can barely afford. I certainly don't want to be seeing that. Now, you know, we've got a problem. We've got a problem. Uh, the barge that's proposed for Portland, uh, when we look at the numbers that came across the channel just last week, that barge will be fill up, filled up uh, in just a few days. One day, so, <laughs> You know, we, we have got a, a serious issue here because even if we stop the boats tomorrow, we still have 50,000 people uh, in accommodation and it is very irksome to the general public, the general taxpayer, to see uh, £7 million a day being spent across 400 hotels, pro probably and possibly on a high street near you soon, uh, to be paying out for this. So uh, I think what the government is trying to do is, is to give the message that if you come to Britain through this illegal route, a route that you need not take, you're perfectly safe, you're in a country called France and it's perfectly safe. Uh, if you do choose to come, then the accommodation that you face will not be that luxurious and it should not be. But then, Julia, what I'm sure we'll see uh, will be human rights yeah. uh, claims by activist lawyers saying, 
it's really not quite good enough for uh, my clients, just as we saw at Napier Barracks down uh, in Folkestone a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm afraid this does not wash. We need to get to the root of the problem. That's why we've got the illegal migration bill. And I'll say it again, Julia, as I've said to you many times over many months, if not years now, the French could stop this in a fortnight. And I just simply cannot believe that they could extend military power and force into an entire country called Mali in yeah. West Africa, but they seem incapable of patrolling plus or minus three miles from Calais. Well, to it be fair, the, the French police are struggling to keep order in the central streets of Paris at the current time. <laughs> that is true. French police are rather busy all over the country, in a, a country that, you know, if we think we have a degree of strife and uh, the, the problems of just stop oil extinction rebellion and others, mm. uh, I think that rather pales into insignificance compared to yep. uh, what French police are um, facing, uh, a couple of which were caught on fire with Molotov cocktails just yeah, over the weekend. Indeed. But, but again, I mean, I think, you know, what the French people are facing often when, when peaceful protests are actually attacked by French police as well. Um, we're in a situation with this, the migrant boats is still a massive issue. I mean, the, you know, the Islington dinner party set just don't seem to think this is a big deal. They really, really don't get how upset that these people are about this, just watching on the TV. But also, when, you know, people are housed in hotels uh, near them, we've seen a you know, village, and uh, even you say you mentioned the barge at Portland, the local people, no one bothered asking them. Uh, no one no one asked, you, if you were going to do a housing development like that, there would have to be questions about that. You know, local circus coming to town, they would be planning permission and like, but no, nothing at all. This is being imposed on people. Many of these local, these ports say, look, we, we, we don't want these people housed here. Um, this is one of the big pledges that the Prime Minister made, stop the boats. Now, he's not going to stop all the boats, but I think people would be clear if there was enough being done uh, that, that it was on side. When we come to the NHS strikes, it looks like a deal's been done with this 5% pay rise this year, one-off payments for last year. Not all of the unions are on board, but we're seeing some progress. Um, is the Prime Minister on his way to delivering on those pledges that he made to us? I think he can. Uh, the Stop the Boats is a very powerful message. It's obviously been chosen as the message because that's the yeah. one that people want to hear. Now, we will find ourselves in some difficulties if that Stop the Boats message does not get delivered. And hence why we have a, a fairly robust bill uh, in the illegal migration bill. It simply has to work. And I, I, well, I realise it, and I'm sure the Prime Minister and the Number 10 team realise it, get this right and I think we could uh, still win the next general election because the reality is Julia when you listen to some of the Labour members of Parliament you listen to the activists you listen to you know Amnesty and all of those they simply want open borders for Britain and that is not what British people want uh, politics is the art of the possible it's about delivering what people want otherwise we get voted out it's as simple as that well, you say what people we want to deliver this do people want the level of legal migration that we have at the current time because the numbers are absolutely staggering we've seen some you know figures uh, go down really briefly over you know eu migration of course a lot of that to do with lockdown and people returning home but in terms of non-eu migration particularly from the indian subcontinent the numbers are sky high in the many hundreds of thousands every year um and again voting for brexit wasn't about you know closing our borders this was a, a caricature of of the remainers in terms of that but it was about controlling our borders um yes we know there are issues in terms of uh, you know bringing in enough labor and the like but we still have huge huge numbers of legal migrants to this country students and others but people able to stay on after doing their studies um do you think mm. that that is good it, a lot of people are saying the the battles over the the channel migrants is a little bit of a smoke screen ignoring the legal mm. levels when we mm. are not seeing the number of houses schools hospitals and others being built to cater to that new population and you, you raise the most important point julia and and strangely enough myself and a number of colleagues had a detailed discussion uh, last night about exactly this can i point there out i was slight... not aware of this <laughs> no, th th there is a slight difference that those who uh, choose the illegal routes on a dinghy are then a, a cost to all of us as taxpayers. Those who come in under a, a, a proper visa route are, are, are not generally. But we cannot have, in my view, half a million uh, additional people entering the UK every year, even under you know, proper migration job-related schemes. We have a, a, a work visa or a, you know, that type of scheme. Is it now accessible to 60% of all the jobs available in the UK. You know, we're virtually open 
for uh, you know skilled migration. And, 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 and you don't have to advertise the jobs here to, to people in the UK first either. No, you, you don't. But uh, in my email inbox, it's full of people with housing problems, all of those issues, can't get into doctors, schools are difficult, all of those type of things. How on earth can it get better by adding half a million people to the population every year? You know, we have a housing issue. Whenever uh, there is a proposal for a big housing development, that is a big local concern. People don't want it. You know, I won't go as far as it being nimbyism, but you know, people are always very concerned about housing. Uh, and so just to add to that burden every year, whilst we still have four and a half to five million people on a form of benefit so the argument that it's all about we need the people for jobs yeah, yeah there's a certain amount in that but uh, you know if we were to fill our domestic population uh, fully into work as far as we possibly can and it, then if we have shortages then to me that's the time to look at it but we've okay. seen some you know some ridiculous situation of students uh, allowed to bring entire families with them you know that has to be a a struggle and a burden on schools and, uh, and doctors. But at the very least, and, the very least, again, we had this under Tony Blair for many years. We we need to have a national conversation about it because a lot of people they they didn't they this is not what they thought they signed up to. And again, and it's not xenophobic. It's not nothing to that. It is simply about national resources and whether or not people are actually added value to the people who are already here. By the way, of every creed and colour uh, and the like. Um, look, Craig McKinley could talk to you forever on all these big uh, big topics. Hope you'll come and join us again very soon.